Growing up in Texas, Friday night football was everything. The whole town would show up every Friday night during the fall, whether it was a scrimmage or a playoff game, whether your team was amazing or amazingly awful. And in my hometown, we actually had two high schools, both of which were pretty good at football. So it was a massive rivalry. And the week leading up to the game was filled with, you know, vitriolic team spirit. And the night of the game was filled with adrenaline and excitement. And every time the refs made a call against our team, it was bad and they were wrong. And Every time the refs made a call for our team, of course that was the right call to make. You know, if our team won, it's because we were just awesome. If our team lost, it, well, it was the refs' fault. Uh, and I say we in this, but that's actually not accurate because my high school experience was a little bit different. Unbeknownst to most of my friends, my dad was the football referee. He's been a high school football referee since before I was born and he still is to this day. He was the one uh, making the calls at the big game, him and his ref crew. There would be times when a call would come against our team and the fans around me would just explode. The stands would rise up and they would scream and they would yell and they would boo and they would point and they would say horrible things because they loved their team. But I loved my dad and I knew that my dad was doing his best to call a fair and even game so that the competition was based on the talent of the teams and the coaching styles and the hard work that each team put in instead of on illegal plays or people trying to cheat. There's a lot of things that I learned from growing up as the refs kid, but the main one that still sticks with me today is the fact that I, even now, I cannot dehumanize the other team because my dad would come home from games, even our big crosstown rivalry games, and he would say, hey, did you know that the coach of the other team, his wife just had their third baby? Or he'd say, oh, remember that quarterback that was doing so well? His mom's actually really, really sick and we should really pray for them. It reminded me that even though we have this massive, emotionally charged rivalry with this other team, the people on the other team are still humans. They're still people that are loved by God that have their own issues just like us. So while my friends were able to completely dismiss everybody from the other high school or completely dismiss any call for the other team, I could never do that because I knew that there were people on the other side of it just like we were on our side. I feel like today when our country is still so divided, whether it's politically or religiously or in any number of ways, no matter where we stand on any issue or anything, there's always somebody on the other side. We will always have an opponent, but we don't have to dehumanize that opponent. We can disagree. We can understand that we're coming from different perspectives. We can even argue, but we don't have to fill it with, you know, this vitriolic hatred for the other. We can recognize the humanity of the other person and recognize the love of God for the other person and do our best to love that person even as we're able to disagree with them. So let's rise above some of the discourse that we're hearing that categorizes all people into one monolithic group or another. You're either with us or against us. You're either this or you're that. Let's reject that thinking because it's not true. We can compete, we can have opponents, we can disagree, but above all of those things, we are humans together, beloved by God, who have to figure out how to live in this world with one another in a way that brings forth peace. So I think that's a good challenge for all of us to remember, especially as we're going into the holidays. Act like the ref's kid. We'll figure it out.